Hi guys, welcome to my channel. It is very common for us to see the OLED display being interfaced with a Node MCU or a ESP32. But have you ever wondered, you can also configure the OLED display with this mini ESP82601 board. Yes, you heard me right. The ESP82601 board is now pretty much forgotten due to its powerful successors like the Node MCU or the ESP32 and other such boards. The secret feature of this tiny little board is that it supports I2C communication. Yes, you heard that right. Want to know more? Let's get started in this video. To get an idea of the I2C communication of the ESP82601 module, let's first have a look at the datasheet of the main IC of the module. It is the Espressive's ESP82661EX. Coming to the specifications of that IC, in the hardware section under the peripheral interface, we find the mention of I2C, which means that this IC definitely supports the I2C communication protocol. It is interesting to see that it also supports other kind of communication protocols. Coming down to the other sections of the datasheet, we have the physical overview of the IC itself with the necessary pin diagram and the pin functions. Let us now go to the block diagram of the IC where it also mentions in the interface the different communication protocols which the IC is capable of performing. It has I2C, I2S, a PWM feature and interestingly also an ADC feature. The datasheet also briefly mentions the descriptions of the pin and the required pins for each protocols. Over here in the peripheral interface section, you can see that it has mentioned for the SPI protocol where it also mentions the pins required for the SPI communication. Similarly, we have the I2C interface and for this, the pin responsible is GPIO2, yes, which is responsible for the I2C SDA or the data transmission for the I2C interface. This is a block diagram of the connections of the project. Over here you can see that the ESP8266 and the I2C OLED display are connected with a common power supply for 5 volts. You can also power the same with 3.3 volts to be on the safe side. Ideally the current and the voltage limit should be around 250 milliamps and 3.3 volts respectively for safe operation of the ESP8266 board. I have tested the ESP8266 board and they work just fine with 5 volts as well. Over here you can see that the GPIO0 is connected to SCK and the GPIO2 is connected to SDA. We saw in the datasheet that the GPIO2 is responsible for the data communication and the GPIO0 is here configured as the clock signal for the I2C interface. Well, this is my miniature breadboard circuit of what we had just discussed earlier. Over here, you can see that this is a CH340G USB to serial converter breakout board, which is used to program the ESP8266. Over here, I also have a micro USB breakout to connect the entire breadboard circuit with my computer as well as provide the power supply. This is uh, my DIY. ESP8266 breadboard, uh, breadboard friendly breakout board which can be used to easily access the pins of the module. Over here you can see that these two wires are connected from GPIO 0 and 2 to the SCK and SDA pins as discussed earlier. On this ESP8266 I have loaded a simple animation sketch which you can get in the Arduino library section. Well as you can see the OLED module displays the animation flawlessly. These animation programs are part of the Adafruit uh, library which is used to initialize the OLED displays. The link to the library and other resources will be in the video description. To save myself from the hassle of arranging everything up in the breadboard to test it with the not so breadboard friendly ESP8266 board. I designed this ESP01 development board. The details of the build and the circuit will be in the description. 
You can also check out the I button on top of this video. Over here you can see that the program or the ESP8266 board along with all the other peripheral parts are already soldered into one little compact module. This is very handy if you want to program and experiment with the ESP8266 O1 module. I would like to briefly describe the circuit of the ESP01 development board which I had made earlier. Over here you can see the CST40G IC which is the USB to serial converter. It is responsible for communication of the ESP82661 with the computer and also uploading the codes. I have attached an LED to the TX and RX pins which gives me a visual representation of when data is being exchanged. The 12 MHz crystal and the capacitor are used for the internal clock and the upload speed of the code. The AMS 1117 3.3 volt voltage regulator converts the 5 volt of the USB to 3.3 volt. Remember, the ESP8266 is a 3.3 volt module and 5 volts may be harmful. Though I have tested this module with 5 volts, let's not take any risks. The 100 microfarad and the 0.1 microfarad capacitor banks provide smooth output voltage free from any spikes. The switch is used to put the ESP8266 in programming mode, pulling the GPIO0 to ground. The 4 pin header are used to connect external devices, namely power supply which is VCC and ground and it also has the pinout for the GPIO0 and the GPIO2. The reset button as well resets the entire board and starts the uploaded code all over again. These are the main components of the ESP8266 O1 development board which I had made. Well, this is the Arduino code which I have used to display the animations on the OLED screen as you have seen in the video section earlier. The first part of the code is including the necessary libraries to set up the I2C communication and also to set up the OLED display. The SPI and the wire libraries are for the I2C communication. The two Adafruit libraries are for setting up the OLED display. These libraries also include the example animation sketch that you have seen earlier. I have also set up the screen width and the height according to my display. It can be different for yours. The OLED reset function tells the Arduino sketch which pin is actually the clock pin. For some reason, GPIO0 does not work here and I have to use one over here. We initialize the OLED display with the screen width, height and the I2C address. The remaining part of the code can easily be found in the Adafruit animation example as well. Next we come to the setup section where we initialize the wire.begin function. We also initialize the OLED display and give instruction to the display to start displaying using the display.display .display function. We also clear the display and the buffer, select the text size, set the cursor to 0.0, .0 which is the initial point and also set the color to white. The remaining part of the code can easily be found in the example from the aid of root library. I have just modified some part of it so that the, all of the code is compatible with the ESP8266 I2C communication. This code and the libraries and other details will be available in the link in the video description. I hope you like this powerful but unexplored feature of the ESP module. In my opinion, this little module is pretty underrated for what it has to offer. Stay connected to my channel because I will be uploading a couple of videos exploring more features and the power of this mini module. If you like this video, consider subscribing to my channel. Share your feedbacks in the comment section and do let me know whether this information was helpful to you. I hope to see you in the later parts of this video series. Till then, keep innovating and I will see you in the next one.